So you bought the top. Well, what do you do next? Well, in this video, I'm going to see if I can give you guys some copium. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, we're going to talk about books going down in value. That's right. It's going to be a video where I hopefully can give you guys some copium if you're someone out there who bought at the top and now has a loss on, you know, some of the books in your collection. And in this video, we're going to kind of ask the question, you know, what can you do or what should you do and see if we can kind of look at some of the market, look at some of the data, kind of get an understanding of what happens when books, you know, crash, so to speak, and see if we can get some takeaways and maybe some actionable ideas that could be helpful for you guys in deciding what you want to do next. But before I get into the video, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, help support the channel, do one of those things, I would appreciate it. But let us get into this video here today. And again, just to preface, this is not financial advice. This is just me sharing you know, my thoughts of what I would do if I was someone who bought at the top with certain books and what I might consider doing uh, you know, in the future. So take this all with a grain of salt. Other little preface up front, I'm going to be specifically talking about books that mostly relate to the MCU and generally speaking are, you know, at least blue chip keys or key books with first appearances. All right, with that all the way, let's finally get into this topic here. You know, we have to talk about some of the books I think that, you know, we know to be the elephants in the room with these certain situations. And that is going to be Special Marvel Edition 15 and Eternals number one, books that absolutely went to the moon and absolutely had a massive correction. So there's probably a lot of people out there that you know bought those books and are feeling the pain right now so let's see if we can kind of make some determinations with these things here but in case you guys don't know uh, special marvel edition first appearance of shang chi right here is of course a book that you know got super hot uh in the middle of 2021 i mean that was right at the height of the market height of the boom in april when the trailer came out people went crazy for this thing and if we just kind of look at you know a snapshot of the graph we can get a sense of what this book's journey has been so i'd like to focus in on the eight 8.5 right here because it has a bigger census count at 424. Uh, you know, we could talk 9.8s, but there's so few that the numbers start to get a little uh, wibbly wobbly. So, you know, I feel like 8.5 is a better uh, understanding of what this book's journey has be, has been over the last, you know, uh, couple years. So, you know, we look at this book all the way back before anyone knew who Shang-Chi was. You know, this was a book that was sold around the $100, $150 range. Uh, we get some kind of announcement that Shang-Chi is going to be in the MCU. That's when the book, uh, you know, picks up right here. Uh, then there's always a little bit of correction as the hype dies down. And then we get into 2021. This book sells all the way up to $1,250 at the 8.5 grade and now has corrected all the way back down to around $672.88. So generally speaking, we can kind of say that this book has had a 50% pullback uh, in its market value, a 50% correction. But right off the bat, you know, one of the things I think is really interesting as I've been able to kind of parse through some of the other books and look at some of the data is that generally speaking, it feels like books usually don't crash more than 50%. You know, even you know, if we pull back other books with other data of other characters, uh, generally speaking, you know, a book can get super hot and when it corrects back down, 50% tends to be the number. I mean, there are, you know, examples of books that go down even further than that, but but I would generally say as a general argument, if you're someone who owns a book and you bought it at the top and it's now corrected back by 50%, uh, you the, the bleeding has mostly stopped, I would say, generally speaking. Now, there is a book that we're gonna talk about, Eternals One, who is actually corrected even more than 50%. Uh, but I would actually make the suggestion that you know that's now due to you know the bad PR of the book. So just generally know, 50% uh, seems to be kind of like a magic number. We're gonna see examples of that you know later on in this video. Uh, then the other book, of course, like I already mentioned, is Eternals number one, uh, first appearance of Icarus, uh, first appearance of, you know, I guess the Eternals, generally speaking, even though the Eternals make a bunch of different appearances throughout the course of this book series. Uh, but this is also a book that you can see right here, uh, kind of got a little bit of a spike due to the announcement that we were going to be getting an Eternals film. Uh, then it dies down a little bit, and then we get the massive, massive uh, high of around $3,500. And then this book corrects all the way back down to $1,329 present dollar value. So this is an example of a book that has gone even more than 50%. But you know, when we look at some of the other examples of titles that have corrected that hard back down into the market, 50% usually starts to be where, you know, the book sees a trend upwards. So right off the bat, you know, you're someone out there who bought, you know, Shang-Chi or you bought Eternals 1 or whatever the case may be, and you're feeling the pain right now, what should you do with this book? Well, you have to ask yourself a couple of questions. And the most important question is, of course, you know, what is your financial situation? 
situation. You know, everybody is different. I don't know what your guys' financial situation is. I definitely can't give you guys an answer. Only you guys know what you want to do with the money, so to speak. You know, if you are someone who needs, you know, money right now and you want to sell this book, then by all means, you know, sell it, sell it, recoup whatever you can get for it and let that money go to, you know, whatever you actually need it for. Now, the question is, if you're someone who doesn't necessarily need that money, uh, you know, what are you going to do when you sell this book? Are you going to reinvest it into another book? Are you going to just put it back into your bank account? Are you going to take that money and invest it into some other asset class? You know, those are all questions that are going to be different for each individual person. But, you know, it's really important for you guys to understand, you know, what it is that you want to do with re recouping your money. Now, if you're someone who is thinking to yourself, hey, should I recoup my money and then use that money to buy another book that might appreciate over time? Well, let me see if I can give you guys an answer to that question. I think it's a safe assumption to make that they are going to reappear back into the MCU. So let's think and see if we can look at another book that has been sort of a consistent book with a lot of data that you know can give us some indication of what happens when characters come back into the MCU. And the book that I always like to talk about about because I feel like this is the index fund of the market of comic books. And this, of course, is Iron Man number one. Uh, it is not the first appearance of an Iron Man. Of course, this is the first solo series for Iron Man, but it's a great book, a classic book, one that people always like to have in their collection, and one that I think can give us a lot of understanding of how the market moves. So let's go down here to the 6.5 grade uh, for this Iron Man book. And one of the cool things about this is that this can tell us, you know, what has the Iron Man character done throughout the course of the MCU? You know, when they make their appearances in films, uh, when there's, you know, when they're not in films, you know, when and we see certain highs with this book, how long it takes to get those highs again. So let's take a look at this one right here. And I like to do the 6.5 grade because it has one of the bigger census counts. So generally speaking, you know, when we start and rewind the clock back to before there was the MCU, we can see this book in 2002 sitting around the $152 range. Then we get Iron Man number one, right? Everybody is crazy for Iron Man. He's the new hotness, the coolest character in Marvel at that moment. And in January of 2008, you know, right before we get the film, this book sells around $469.76 at the 6.5 grade. So like things do, people get really excited during the heights of the film. And then after it, it starts to correct back down. And we see it go all the way back down to $190.40 here in December of 2011. So again, we went from $469 down all the way to $190. So off the bat, I think there are some interesting takeaways here because remember, we're now in 2011 and Iron Man 1 was in 2008, but you know we also had Iron Man 2 in 2010. So just because Iron Man showed back up again in his sequel film didn't mean that the movie you know, uh, was able to move the price and the values of the book. You know, it actually wasn't until Avengers number one in 2012 where this book, you know, shot back up to that $453 price range. So, you know, it took about, you know, four years or so from 2008 to around 2012 for this book to reach again with that peak value. And it took the success of a film like Avengers number one, as opposed to Iron Man number two, for the book to, you know, manufacture the excitement and the demand to reach that peak value again. So what are some of the takeaways of that? Well, that should suggest to me that, you know, just because Shang-Chi and the Eternals show back up in a MCU property, you know, if they get Shang-Chi 2 or whatever, uh, I'm not so convinced that that book's price is going to necessarily right away go back up to where it was. But if Shang-Chi, you know, comes back in his film and maybe he makes an appearance in an Avengers film and the Avengers film is very exciting and it's an ensemble cast and everyone does something very, very cool, then I do think that those Shang-Chi books and those numbers will start to hit those previous peaks that they were hitting back in April. So I think it takes a little bit of time and what we generally see is a four-year cycle for a book to sort of reach that new peak high. Now, it's not exactly a perfect science. I've been looking at different books across different grades and all different examples, but typically speaking, four to six years is the window to which, you know, a book takes that amount of time to hit a all-time high once again. So the question to you guys is, are you someone who is willing to sit on your book, Special Marvel 15 or Eternals 1, for four to six years in order to see that new high? If you're not someone who's willing to just hold it, like if you don't love the book uh, and it's not going to stay in your collection for, you know, forever, or at least, you know, the next 
five to 10 years. What you could decide to do is sell the book now, then wait about two or three years to where you know you start to see the market uh, pick back up for that book. Because you know if it hits that sort of four to five year market cycle, uh, you start to see the book trend upwards once again. So that is something that you have to decide for yourself. You know if you want to you know take the money, take the losses, and put that into another book that you think can appreciate faster, that might be a good idea for you. If you're someone who you know is just concerned because you still love the book, but you just have that you know uh, bad feeling in your stomach that you overspend for it, well I would say to you you know wait about four, five, six years and you will start to see you know, the, the equity of your book hitting back to the level to which you bought it. But let's continue to look at Iron Man number one and see how it sort of behaved in the market because one of these things that I'm interested in is this idea of the four-year cycle. So once we get Avengers number one, this, this uh, book picks back up again and then we see a new peak high right here in 2016 around Civil War where this book sells for $600, oh, excuse me, $669.64. And then actually after Civil War, you know, we see that this book actually does correct which is pretty interesting. And it goes all the way back down to 382 here in 2017. So it did have sort of a 50% pullback, generally speaking. And then even throughout the course of, you know, Infinity War and Endgame in 2018 and 2019, uh, it doesn't reach its new record high until we get to about 2020, which is actually after uh, Infinity War and Endgame. So it wasn't so much that the movies, you know, had a direct hand in moving this book. You know, we're thinking about this in terms of just how the market behaves, you know, even outside of MCU uh, spec. You know, this book took about four years of its market cycle to hit that sort of $650 threshold. Now, again, we get into 2021 and this thing goes crazy and now we're at the prices that we're at. So, so we're kind of in uncharted waters here. So it's a little bit hard to know where we go from here. But generally speaking, which, when you look across the grade levels, it takes about four to six years for this book to reach those market highs. Now, another book I think is really interesting, and this is one that I think is worth talking about, is Tales of Suspense number 50. Because, you know, this one here features the Mandarin, first appearance of the Mandarin. And we know that in Shang-Chi, spoilers in case you guys haven't seen it, but you know, the Mandarin dies at the end of the film. Although, you know, in my opinion, no character ever truly dies. I think that if they want to bring Tony Leong back, they will totally bring him back in some way, shape or form. But you know, for all intents and purposes, uh, he has died in the MCU. And now his book is starting to, you know, slowly, slowly uh, correct back down. So what if you're someone who owns a book like this, or maybe you're someone who bought, you know, Amazing Spider-Man 361, First Appearance of Carnage, you know, a villain, you know, because one thing is we know that Shang-Chi and the Eternals are going to show up again, but we don't necessarily know when the Mandarin or Carnage is going to show up. You know, what do you do if you're someone who bought this book? Well, luckily, we can kind of make similar takeaways to what we just talked about with those other books right here. Uh, and especially if we look at, you know, some of the numbers for Tales of Suspense 50. So here I am in the 7.0 grade, again, just a, a, a grade level that has a higher census count. And if we look at this book's value, again, here we are, you know, before pre-MCU, this book was, you know, sort of selling around the $100 range, I guess not pre-MCU, but 2009. Then we get the Mandarin in Iron Man number three, right? This book shoots all the way up to $540, you know, January of 2013, going into Iron Man three, when we are going to get, you know, that the Mandarin character, or at least what we thought was going to be the Mandarin character. And then after we get his portrayal, the brand of this character is hurt. You know, this book corrects back down to 341, maybe has a little bit of an uptick back here in 523, but it goes all the way back down to 243 here in 2016. So again, you know, kind of around that 50% correction, which is kind of that magic number before the book starts to see an uptick or a movement upwards uh, in its market. So even without, you know, the Mandarin uh, coming into the MCU once again, once it hit this bottom at 243, we start to see a little bit of an upward trend, generally speaking. And then when we get to right here, uh, back in 2019, when there's an announcement that we're doing Shang-Chi and then we're going to get the new Mandarin, this book skyrockets back up to $806. So from 806 in 2019, 2019 back to 540 here in 2013. Basically, we're talking about six years right there for it to reach a new all-time high. Now that took an announcement for the character to be coming back into the MCU. What if you happen to own a book for a character that doesn't have an announcement coming back into the MCU? Well, generally speaking, I think you're actually still in pretty good shape. And one of the things that you know we can talk about or look at is some of the books that don't relate to the MCU. And some of the ones that I picked out in, in particular is X-Factor number six and New Mutants 86. 
57. Now, these books have been speculated that these characters might be showing up in the MCU, but we also can make determinations over the fact that even before we knew that that might have been the case, uh, we can see what the values of these books had in their respective Fox films. So, you know, we look at a book like New Mutants 98, which of course is the first appearance of Cable uh, here in 2012. This is like a hundred dollar book. Uh, and then we start to get, you know, some upward ticks basically uh, probably at the rate of inflation. We get this kind of big spike right here in 2016. And this is probably due to the fact that, you know, maybe it was around this time where we would start to get rumors about, you know, uh, him making an appearance in Deadpool 2. So that kind of generates that excitement. Here in 2018, we see this uh, kind of upward tick for this, this book right here once again. Uh, and then after we get him in the film, this book corrects all the way back down from $630 all the way back down to $368. So once again, kind of around that 50% correction level that we typically see. Uh, but now from 2018 you know, up until 2021 right here, it took about you know three years or so, but this book reaches the new high with the 2021 boom. And now here in 2020 sits at $700, which is well above its peak you know, in sort of that cycle that it had in 2018. So again, in that sort of four year cycle is how long it took for this book to sort of reach a floor level that was its previous high. Similarly with X Factor uh, number six here, first appearance of Apocalypse, you know, it was probably around here where we started to get, you know, maybe some leaks that Apocalypse was going to be coming in some of these films. Maybe there were some Easter eggs in 2013, but it was around, you know, $434. We get the film, uh, you know, this, this book actually trades sideways. It didn't have a massive increase overall. So it probably came mostly due to the announcement or the excitement of Apocalypse coming. I think it was at the, you know, end of, the film where we got the Four Horsemen tease, uh, the, the the previous film leading into Apocalypse, and that was one of the reasons why this book had the spike at this point. And then we got the film, and you know it went back down to 341, and then after the film, which nobody liked, this book corrects all the way back down to 152. So again, from 341 to 152, another 50 percent correction, so to speak. And then as we go to you know 2020 or so, that's when the bu book starts to pick back up some steam a little bit. Uh, it shoots back up here in 2021. And now, you know, the new floor for this book right here is has eclipsed, you know, the peak to which it had back all the way in 2013 and in 2016. So again, sort of a four to six year cycle where it takes that amount of time for a book to reach a new floor that eclipses its former peak. Anyways, that is all I have for this video. That was me just sort of offering you guys some thoughts. If you're someone out there who bought the top, again, you have to decide for yourself, what is it that you you want to do with the money if you're someone who wants to take that loss right now. You know, if you're someone who just wants to own this book for your PC, uh, what I'm here to tell you is don't worry about it. Over the long haul, I think that you will be likely okay and you will start to, you know, recoup the equity that you lost or the unrealized losses that you had in that book. You will eventually be able to make up for that. But if you're someone who wants to sort of move on from the book, you know, it is certainly a strategy that you can implore where you sell the book right now, buy another key that you're more interested in, and then in two to three years time, you can buy back into that book uh, before it sort of hits that cycle where it starts to go back up. Anyways, that's all for this video. Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and I will see you in the next one.